Yeah, um, last question. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Professor, yes, for you. your presentations. Have you have a very rich content about acoustic metal materials? So my question is, in the last part about learning technology, uh, so in principle, your optimizations um, is like a eight dimensional optimization problem, right? You have six uh, density and a six bar to be optimized for the four layer. Uh, not six. It's actually it's uh four uh four ah, modules yeah, and a four. Yeah. But, but but anyway, this is not in, in total. There are eight parameters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So did you ever try some other let's say more traditional optimization algorithms to do this optimization? Well, this is a a very very good question. That uh, the traditional optimizations, um. Well, what what I can say about the traditional optimization is that uh, uh, actually the optimization is uh, like gen, uh, is very already as I mentioned is already very powerful, okay. But uh, what we want to like have um, you know, once uh, you have this uh, already trained network and you can you can do uh, like uh, not just one thing, you can have uh, have other uh, like these uh, uh, functionalities. Uh, to be achieved, just uh, you input this uh, into the system, and uh, then you get uh, the the outcome there. So uh, to answer your question, uh, here we don't uh, try the traditional optimization. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And small questions. So for the predicted parameters from the network, you also need algorithm to double check whether it work right because this network. Uh, it can predict uh, the result to be. Um, it has high probability to predict the correct result, but sometimes it can also predict the result that are not correct. So, so you that's, also you using that's, the trans, trans uh, mat transformation matrix method to further verify the result. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So you can see we have uh, this uh, uh, data data set is a standard that's uh, like six thousand for the training. And uh, like validation, we have uh, four thousand, and uh, the rest is uh, for testing the predictions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. so the results are <laughs> obtained from the transform uh, transform matrix methods. Okay, great. Do we have any more questions? You would like to ask another question? Or... No, thanks. No. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sure. So, anybody wants to ask uh, questions? This could be as well on the effective medium properties. This can be the first part of the talk. Yes, Mohamed, please. I have a question regarding the personal effect that you described. Uh, I was just wondering if you take into account and how you define it precisely in uh, in an experimental way, uh, because the the way I heard about this personal effect was uh, rather in quantum mechanics on the and and here you you basically when once you put your source the source is not influenced too much in some cases on the, the reflection of the of your medium. So I was just wondering how this these calculations are done and how you define precisely the personal effect in your metamaterial once you place your source inside. Okay, so uh, thank you for this uh, very, uh, very, very good question and very detailed about uh, how do we quantify this uh, personal effect. And uh, uh, here I did not show uh, very explicitly on the slide, uh, but in our paper we have explained. So personal effect is asso associated with uh, these uh, uh, density of states, and uh, which can be calculated by using this. Uh, so I put it here uh, by using the Green's function. And uh, in the paper, we have a very detailed uh, der derivations. Actually, we showed that uh, these uh, uh, this um, uh, the 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 uh, uh, sorry, this density of states is uh, 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 connected through the Green's function and then through the power, the power of uh, of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of 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 this source, the emitted source, and uh, then. Uh, actually, in the measurement and also in the calculation, we did uh, the, the the power ratio. Okay, so if I, the most naively, if I take your the picture on the left side, 
So you have a certain source that is a, that has a certain emission here in the middle. You, you so you mean this, this this left side is a sample, right? Yes. It, 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 basically, I can compare the case like with and without sample in the experiments. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's the way you defined. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I can ask a question following here. So, in principle, this metamaterial structure like to change in the coupling impedance of the source to the environment, right? So exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Do we have any more questions? Yes, if I can slip in a question. Sure, um, please do. Your, the the uh, fitness function that you were using, the normalized uh, cloak value over the normal, the cloak value normalized by the uncloaked object. Why mm -hmm. did you choose that? And I saw data that, I'm, I'm not certain if you switched to mean square error when you started using the autoencoder. Yeah, this, uh, you mean this one, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why, why did you use over the object? Isn't it, would, would it not make more sense to use over the, um, uncloaked region or? Um, the, the object is the bare object. So it's, uh, like, uh, the, we, we, we want to actually, you know, this, uh, scattering cancellation, of course, we want to have a zero uh scattering that is uh, for very ideal case uh but uh actually in the uh reality that is uh, um we want uh we want to see if uh, sometimes um uh, we can relax it uh, to see that uh, this uh, uh scattering cross section is uh, significantly reduced so that's how uh, we uh, compare to the uh, original uh you know this uh, scattering uh, cross section okay Thank you very much. You're welcome. I've got a silly question. Uh, your cloak, does it depend upon uh, the object property? Yes. Hmm. Yes, it depends. So if you have change, uh, change the, 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 uh, the object and then the parameter will change. Then. What kind of mechanism uh, does the cloak rely upon? Is it strong anisotropy? Is it some some kind of scattering consolation? Because usually, when it's a transformation based cloak, it mm -hmm. should not depend upon the object property. Is it? Is that it? Um, well, I think. Um, um... I think it's um, is uh, like this this uh, uh, how to say that uh, because um, you know this um, uh, if you change the object and it's a scattering well the scattering pro uh, uh, this uh, scattering pr uh, feature will change. Okay. And, uh, In fact, I'm asking this question because Ole Sigmund uh, he looked into all the optimal design of cloaks. And you mm -hmm. know, these were looking like Rorsha, you know, uh, very strange, uh, weird shapes. But I wonder yeah. whether you found something which is similar. Okay, you are constrained to the circular shape. You have only four layers to play with. And what is the role played uh, by transformation acoustics in this? It's nothing, no? Oh, trend, trend, uh, if, if you're talking about transfer acoustics, yes, because uh, it's, uh, it's based on this... Uh, uh this uh, conformal mapping so actually it opens the space inside so that's why you what 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 kind of things you put inside is irrelevant doesn't affect but uh, the scattering consolation here uh the in the inner core or the object indeed affect the scattering properties so that so, is uh, this uh, this this is uh, uh purely on the scattering consolation so we calculate yeah. the scattering cross sections okay. And here comes the point. Uh, here comes my point. You know, in this kind of transformation-based 
uh, yep. scheme, you can approximate the transformed medium by layering. You know, you could have concentric layers. Uh -huh. This would be designed in such a way that the anisotropy would increase when you move towards the center of the cloak. Mm -hmm. And here, how does it compare? I mean, uh, can you see any pattern in the kind of, you know, material parameters you, uh, you have, so opti optimal uh, material parameters? For instance, uh, do you have any high contrast between the layers? I mean, is there any feature that makes it, you know, uh, similar to other cloaks which are not designed using the deep learning approach? Uh. Uh -huh. how, how, how different is your design? Is it just unique or does it resemble some old existing designs? It's not very clear to me. Um, well, so uh, you said uh, from, if I understand correctly from uh, yeah. of your questions is uh, if uh, for the transformation, uh, transformation acoustics, well, you have, uh, you can also have these uh, concentric layers, but with yes. anisotropic yes. Uh, yes. parameters and uh, to achieve this uh, property. Yes. And uh, and here, actually, we don't have uh, any anisotropy here. It's just a very simple. Uh, you you can see this, uh, this uh, like homogeneous um, homogeneous material. There's a, uh, uh, it's just a uh, simple layers. So the material is uh, like the in the end. Um, we can see the parameters here. Uh, it's just a, like you know this uh, this a very very simple numbers. We don't have uh, in, uh, like this uh, position dependent uh, parameters because it is not trans like change the change the coordinate. I, I totally agree, but you know you can always through homogenization approximate your anisotropic heterogeneous cloak by mm -hmm. an alternation of homogeneous isotropic layers. You can always do this, you know, you know this. You can approximate, you know, yes. an isotropy by, mm -hmm. well, as that isotropic layering. So is there, I mean, for instance, your layers, uh, is uh, the contrast very large between the layers? I mean, the, it doesn't look like, I mean, what are the features of these layers in, in general? What, what, what kind of, you know, optimal uh, design uh, you came up with? I mean, what, what is the main features you would say? D does it look pretty much like you know, scattering consolation cloaks or transformation based cloaks? Or is it totally different? It's very unclear to me. I think it's, uh, it's a still the, in the scattering consolation. Uh -huh. I think it's still the scattering cancellation. It's uh, uh, well, if you look at the parameters, uh, they maybe this uh, case is a uh, special because uh, the object here, the uh, examples is um, like we have the. Let me let me see. Show here. I um, so this parameters is uh, is a bit a bit uh, special. You can see that. Uh, the row is uh, equals to the background yes is 1.5 so actually their difference is not that significant mm -hmm. and um, and uh, we still i i think still to answer your question if uh, uh, if i can that uh, means uh, i i my understanding is uh, still similar to the scattering cancellation but to the scattering cancellation uh we have uh, multiple multiple layers so the purpose of using multiple layers is uh, to uh give some more degree of freedom such that we can have broadband not just a single frequency yeah yeah and it's actually it's similar to you know um uh, abiba marie so the applied mathematician abiba marie hmm. he, uh, he you, you should look up his papers because he proposed effectively some uh, layering to have mm -hmm. scattering consolation mm -hmm. which is broadband uh, it exists with a different asymptotic method, but uh, yeah, this is a little bit reminiscent. So what you say is that if you increase the number of layers, you would make it larger and larger in terms of the bandwidth. Uh, <coughs> well, if you increase the the, 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 the number of layers, ideally yes. you can you can you can you can increase this uh, uh, bandwidth because you have more degrees of freedom. 
but okay. you'll also have to pay the price that uh, the problem is more complex and uh, uh well if for the input uh you will have uh, more uh more designing parameters and uh and then it's uh it will becoming uh to a certain extent will becoming more uh computational challenging yeah, and what I noticed also in your plots is that you have a lot of field inside the, the object. So, uh, well, I, I could a lot of what? You have some field. The field doesn't oh, vanish field. inside the object. Uh, inside uh, the object, I also you, noticed. You okay. mean here? Uh -huh. Yeah. And so, could you add a constraint to your to Algorithm so that the field now vanish, vanishes inside the object. Is it possible for you to add, to add some constraint so that now your design converges towards a cloak which protects the object? Oh, the field. Okay. okay, this is a very good suggestion. Yeah, uh, I think if you like uh, want to have uh, some kind of uh, hollow, like no field inside. Yes. So maybe uh, one way what's just coming to my mind is uh, to change the boundary conditions or to change the like the objects. I don't want I don't want to change the object. I want to keep the same object, but I want the field to vanish inside the object. Is there a solution to this problem, or is it unsolvable? Uh, I cannot say at this moment. Yeah. Yeah, well, because you, you you see that would be very important because some people they try to you know avoid, uh, for instance, you know, uh, if it is a thermal cloak, you want to uh, avoid the object to eat up. You know? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you don't uh, you want to avoid some extreme values on the boundaries. Uh huh. You, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that were naive questions. So please, uh, people. Uh, Come forward with your questions, you know, because we need to learn more on this deep learning. Sure. Uh, I'm totally foreign uh, to deep learning. I don't know this at all. And yeah, please. Can I ask Alba a question? Yeah. No. Hello. Hi, this is Albert Sanchez in Barcelona. Uh, thank you very much for a, for an extremely nice talk. I think it was very illustrating and, and uh, very clear the, the, the explanation. So. Okay, I, I have a question also concerning the, the last part of, of the deep learning. I mean, I wonder whether uh, the, the methods you have developed can be applied or they are exportable or something uh, to, 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 to two different things. One is to different pr uh, problems in acoustics. For example, I mean, can we do something that instead of cloak, uh, concentrates the, 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 the acoustic wave somewhere, for example, or as it was mentioned by Professor Geno a few minutes ago, I mean, this cloak has been designed to uh, to cloak a given object, right? So can we uh, design using deep learning something that, that, that can be like a multi-object cloak? I mean, that, that can make a reasonable cloak for, for a more arbitrary kind of object that you have inside. And the second part of the question, um, if you think these ideas can be applied also, uh, uh, the, the, the kind of mathematical and and optimization procedures that you explained, if they can be applied to other physical systems, I, I guess so. I mean, I don't think they are specific to acoustics, but for example, to thermal uh, clothes, for example, or to electromagnetic clothes and so on. So how general and applicable your, your methods are? Okay, uh, thanks for your questions. So to answer uh, your questions is, so uh, I think this uh, uh, neural network, these things, is not limited to acoustic system. So you can you can for different you have to uh, what you need to is uh, to have a uh, a uh, design uh, space and uh, also the response space, and uh, the network will will learn these uh, uh, relations. So it's mm -hmm. uh, you will have different like the in this uh, illustrations here, you have different functions here. Yeah, but uh, these uh, uh, underlying uh, this uh, uh, ar architecture would be uh, similar. So uh, my short answer is uh, yes, it can be applied to different systems. So especially here, actually, these uh, uh, like uh, encoder this uh, idea and uh, also learning this uh, or generative uh, model to you know learn this uh, distribution can be mm -hmm. can be applied to mm -hmm. to other. 
Mm, I see. And, and even to, to a kind of a universal cloak that in acoustics can cloak a, a kind of general object just by introducing more parameters and optimize all of them. Do you think this is somehow feasible? Not, not, not a cloak devoted to a single object? Say? Um, well, so this is uh, still, um, I, I, I think I need to think about because uh, for an arbitrary like cloak, this is a very good question. And uh, for arbitrary like cloak, and uh, uh, we need to like think of what are the response, like uh, to 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 have a correct, you know, these uh, uh, this uh, like the input and output to, and then we can present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once again, thanks for a very nice talk. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Excellent. Do we have any more questions on the deep learning side or the effective medium side? You know, people do not hesitate to ask trivial questions like me. So uh, we really need to learn today. Potentially. Potentially trivial question, if I can. <laughs> you yes, yes, took yes. your... Um, what is it? Uh, pressure pressure data. The uh, output layer is a hundred is size a hundred. Um, what hundred points are you taking to measure? Is it, are they in a circle around it or circle around the cloak? That's the... Uh, the hundred is uh, is on the spectrum, so different frequencies. So let me show here. It's uh. Um, it's here, so it's uh, from 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 a frequency frequency band, and different frequencies. That's uh, the a hundred. It's uh, not like geometrically around it. So we measure for one frequency. We have one scattering cross sections spectrum, and another frequency, another spectrum. So this uh, is a one hundred. So each of those represents a single frequencies. Uh, spectrum. Fair enough. Any more questions, people? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the great talk. Um, I, my my question is more on the computational side of things. Um, so your your deep neural network has quite a f quite a lot of nodes. Um, um, I was wondering. Uh, did you compute everything on a cluster, or were you able to uh, uh, train your neural networks on local machine? Well, this was uh, performed by my postdoc, and uh, to be honest, I don't know these details. How did he manage to do this? <laughs> and about the time scale, um, do you have any idea how how long it took him to uh, to finish to finish the training? uh how long maybe i i let me see if uh if my postdoc is uh, in the audience i think so and uh yeah that would be really interesting if uh, your uh, colleagues can comment about that i think yes. people are interested yeah so let me see uh how to tag uh, because i'm sharing my screen so i cannot see <laughs> i cannot see the people here so maybe I, let's see. As far as I can see, your coasters are actually here. I can see them among the participants. Yeah. So maybe Wakas can answer these questions. How long does it take for you to finish like this training process? Because uh, um, I, once I asked him to do a more realistic, like steel cylinders in water, and uh, then on the second meeting between us, and he showed me the results. So I don't know if it took him like two days or one day. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I mean, uh, if it's if it's that short of a time scale for one for an iteration of models, uh, that's quite useful for, uh, for trying out different uh, different designs and so on. Isn't it? Yeah. And by the, 
basically this machine learning it was implemented in which kind of uh, package i mean uh, is it some kind of lab package uh, i think it's a called python and um, so you, you you use some kind of uh, deep learning algorithms which are uh, freeware i mean they are available to uh, anyone or uh, it's you know something which is specific to cost um well so i th i think this uh, uh this neural network and also this uh, decoder the things uh are uh, should be available and uh actually uh, you see we have uh, i have a very good colleague from computer science and yeah. uh, he's an expert uh, so so once we have any problems and we just uh, approaching her to help us yeah okay. so i think it's available should be available and what are your plans for the future in terms of machine learning uh, what what do you envisage uh, using machine learning for in uh, acoustic materials uh, electromagnetic materials uh, actually, uh, I talked to 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 uh, to my colleague, and uh, in uh, so that's what I uh, uh, like talked in the in the in the in the, in, the, in in the last part. Um, so my my friends mentioned to me that uh, in their community, it's uh, the big issue is uh, uh, the data. So uh -huh. uh, too many, you know, you you need to have a uh, large data sets. And sometimes the data is not enough. Okay. And you know that if the data is not enough, then you will not be able to have a reliable model. This uh, this uh, this network, you, if your data is not enough, and uh, how to have a uh, develop or have a build this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, reliable model with the limited data is uh, one of the uh, one of the challenging things there, and um, and. Uh, well, I'm not an a uh, expert in machine learning, to be honest. So it's uh, it's just a uh, uh, like uh, we are keeping this in mind. Mm -hmm. If the physical, you know, these uh, principle guided these principles can help to uh, reduce, you know, these uh, data requirements. So that's uh, that's one one one. Uh, one thing and another is, of course, because I identify myself as uh, still in these uh, uh, physics and, uh, you know, these modelings. Uh, so, uh, the machine learning is the kind of tools that we apply in to achieve our goals. And um, what we uh, want to in, uh, want in the future is uh, still have uh, some more practical and, uh, uh, you know, these uh, uh, re, uh, like these uh, uh, acoustic matter materials and uh, matter surfaces, like including like what you, uh, you know, these uh, uh, fluctual waves and uh, different type of things. There are still a large uh, area to explore. Okay. Uh, by the way, so okay. uh, Wakas is here. Yeah, yeah. I saw him. So Wakas, so can you please uh, uh, tell? uh the, the 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 to the audience about the time frame of uh, like training uh do the training how long does it take i think you're muted yes yeah. yes so it took almost one hour i mean if even i run on uh, uh, for instance for the forward case because we need less layers so even maybe half an hour and uh, for a probabilistic case, maybe it took like one hour or something. It, 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 it would not take too much time, like days or something. Uh, in fact, I don't know anything uh, again about machine learning, deep learning. So let us imagine that someone like me who knows absolutely nothing about deep learning would like, you know, to, to start doing you know some research on this so how long would it take for me to you know be able to uh, use it actually would it take one month two months ten years yes okay uh, are, uh, okay can i ask something uh, if you if you are familiar with optimization then maybe in one month is enough one two months yes 
But if you don't know how this uh, connection optimization approaches work, then maybe it took more because it's, it's uh, intrinsically it's more like optimization. Yes. Uh, but instead of running on the model, we run on the data to achieve the desired goal. In practice, so uh, you've got your own package, or uh, these are freewares that you uh, just have to, you know, uh, plug into your own package. Or, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, in fact, you can uh, write your own code, but nowadays, because Python is more developed, I mean, there are a lot of libraries and more packages you can immediately use to like design such kind of models. And you consider yourself uh, an expert in deep learning? This is really your, uh, your field of expertise? In fact, uh, I have the same background like Farah, uh, I mean, you guys. So, yeah. but I have some interest in optimization. Yeah, okay. I think I started uh, one, more than one year ago because I have the idea how this uh, genetic optimization or the gradient descent method, how it works. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, it is, in fact, uh, like uh, one stage more. Or uh, so for me, it was quite straightforward to at least uh, 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 run these kind of uh, things, or I can understand now. Okay, so you mentioned that people who would know, for instance, uh, how the genetic algorithm works would be, uh, you know, uh, making. No, if, okay. Uh, for just explain you more, I mean, I, I am saying there are basically two optimization techniques. Okay. One is the gradient based, like here in all uh, this uh, neural network, we use gradient based uh, optimization because we we find a gradient at each iteration and then we try to minimize this. But genetic algorithm is gradient free; it's more evolutionary algorithm. Yes. But this is more gradient dependent. But we cannot take, even we now develop this uh, uh, another technique, even we can combine this gradient based with this uh, uh, neural network. So instead of taking the gradient of the model, we take the gradient of this uh, uh, loss function, which depends on the weight of the neural network. Because to like uh, calculate the gradient of the model, it's not trivial. Like transfer matrix or something, maybe some kind of singularities, or there are many kind of. But with this, with this uh, neural network, it's quite straightforward because we have the weights. We like optimize the weights and take the gradient of this uh, uh, mean square error or the uh, other kind of error. And uh, in your opinion, what is the advantage? In your opinion, what is the advantage of yes. this deep learning over the genetic algorithm? What more can you do yes. that you can't do okay. with genetic yes. algorithms? Yes. Okay. You know, in this case, if we want only want to find the parameter, or we want to optimize, so whether you optimize with this and the other one, okay, the time is less, or it's more generalized model. You have to train once. When it's trained, I think it would take milliseconds to solve the inverse problem. But if you want to like solve this problem with genetic uh, algorithm, you have to run again at the start and it will maybe take uh, hours or a half an hour, it depends on the problem. One thing is the time. We can immediately find the solution of the training with a fraction of second, maybe with millisecond. The other thing, if you see in the second part, we have the generative model. It doesn't only optimize, it gives the distribution or it gives the sensitivity or this kind of like, we can even get some physical aspect of the, uh, how this data behaves or how this model behaves. Like in conventional approaches, we don't have such kind of facility. Like we have only optimization of the parameters. Yes. And even we find that the geometrical parameters are more sensitive as compared to this. And this we, even we do, we can do with like uh, our model, we can change the parameter, but this is learned by the model, not by manually like changing the parameter and then finding that which parameter is more sensitive. 
and uh, this generating model they are they can be more useful uh, if you say like uh, this determination is more like the uh, optimization of the parameter yeah and also you know in like in optimization the main problem is to find the, the global to where to start yes if you start like very far away even you cannot reach to or to converge to but here we don't need to worry about such kind of issues even people some people combine with this they can get some initial from this and even they can optimize more with some other uh, conventional approaches but then, I mean, Professor Wu and yourself and uh, Mohamed Farad, I know that you uh, you are great physicists, so you would not need the deep learning actually to guess what would be the initial solution. You know, yeah. your initial guess would be good anyway. So, if you are a very good physicist, what is the uh, you know, interest, the main interest in using deep learning, because deep learning, essentially, if I know nothing about physics, I can still find the local minimum, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, you don't need, I mean, uh, of course, in, uh, you cannot start, but here we have only the data. Even you don't know how this data behaves or which kind of system it is. I just, anyway, I mean, even the person who is not physicist, he can train. Maybe it took more time to understand it, to convert this, to find, I mean, we have more gas, what kind of parameter are more, uh, we can fix it or we can uh, find what is more optimized way. Or, but if the other person, he would start and maybe he would start, I mean, because the problem is sometimes you cannot convert to this, uh, very smoothly convert, uh, get the convergence in neural networks. And this is like we need to uh, normalize the data, like uh, data processing or uh, this such kind of uh, method we need. Actually, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I think you are right. So, if a people with very, very good physical insight, of course, he and she can get some solutions. And, uh, but this also is, uh, um, I, well, my personal perspective is, uh, uh, when the problem is becoming more and more complex, for example, here, you have, uh, you have uh, more, you know, like here we have 4 layers and, uh, and, uh, or to be honest, it's already very challenging to, to determine from the, from the physical intuition. Or, like, the, the, the principles. And uh, therefore, I think uh, that's uh, that's what's um, what I'm thinking is uh, we can use our uh, you know these uh, insights to have some initial guess as you said, have some initial guess of uh, for the problem, and uh, but this initial guess may be still away from the true you know this uh, result, and uh, uh, for people what we can do is uh, to. See, okay, try if this works, just like I remember for the uh, zero index material, the design. So, I can tell you that so we indeed spent quite a lot of time in order to find the proper structure. Like before, we have tried all like others. You can, you sometimes, because you have to satisfy uh, some conditions. First, you have to have the monopole and the dipole resonance overlapping. This we know. Degenerate, we know. And we can tune them to degenerate. But they are so like the bandwidth is so narrow the bandwidth is so narrow and or for some other cases this uh like the structure is uh like uh some uh i remembered if uh, like we have very very thin wires these kind of structures and uh, give you very narrow bandwidth so then we have to abandon this idea and try to think of some other ways and also for like you know, these, uh, 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 for water, water case, and we have, uh, silicon rubbers in water. And also, to be honest, I also search a lot for the elastic wave case. And, uh, which, you know, is, uh, you can get from your physical intuitions. You can get some, some results, some conclusions there. And, uh, but the, there are certain, some, uh, certain limitations. And, uh, if you have good luck, uh, you can have, uh, like good very beautiful results that so you have a broadband and overlapping and uh, 
these uh, these things, and it's uh, the band structure is very clean. You don't have any other resonances. Uh, but for most of the cases, and uh, it's uh, it's it's not that uh, we're not that fortunate, and also like for topological, you know, these uh, topological physics, and uh, my student also did a lot of uh, you know these uh, um, tuning the parameters and uh, trying to find you know these uh, trivial and non-trivial band gap overlapping have a larger band gap, you know, these gaps overlapping. So this uh, indeed we know like. From the physics, it should be like that, but uh, in terms of uh, reality, so you have uh, many constraints there. So I think the, uh, the 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 computer or deep learning assisted is uh, uh, it may open some kind of parameter space that you haven't thought before. Maybe the physical intuition, our intuition, is not that good, <laughs> so it may help us to extend further and uh, in turn inspire us to think from other angle and uh, see if. Uh, like this, why these parameters gives uh, like good combinations, good us good uh, give us good results. So I think this they have uh, interactions. So they, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I can add one more comment. For instance, uh, if we want to know like three layers are enough to like get the broadband. I mean, I cannot say, but with this data, even we can like plot somehow to find such what kind of feasible solution. We can get or not a feasibility of the structure. Like we need five layers, seven layers. If we want to such kind of. I mean, we we don't. Of course, we have some intuition, but we cannot exactly say. For instance, I trained, and after like uh, a lot of trial, I found that this structure is not good for uh, broadband effect. We need more layer. Then I have to run again and again. But here is like we can uh, categorize the data or. We can find, uh, I mean, there are a lot of ways where the feasibility of the uh, 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 desired solution to the structure. This we can also uh, get the information. This is really fascinating. There was another aspect of uh, your paper that I can hardly understand. It's my lack of knowledge. Huh? So uh, you have this probabilistic approach towards the end of the paper. Uh, so in fact, uh, how does this work in terms of the deep learning? The deep learning is really something already which is kind of based on some probabilistic approach. It's Bayesian uh, calculus, no? Yes, I mean, <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, it's similar. I mean, when we design this law function, in fact, we want to like find the distribution which satisfied this data. I mean, this the, uh, this this uh, loss function which is written here. This is drawn while considering this uh, Bayesian uh, probability. Of course, if we go to like a mathematical model, how we? I mean, it is based on this probability. I think it's a very important work. I mean, I, I can't really explain why, but I think what you have done is super important because I think also it's universal as you pointed out. You can apply it to any kind of wave physics or diffusion phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what I find a little bit puzzling is that we don't know really what the role we play anymore as physicists, as a computer scientist. I would understand, but as a physicist, it looks like our intuition, our initial guess is not wanted anymore because, like you said, Professor Wu, our initial guess may be wrong. No, I'm not. Uh, I, I I think initial guess is also important. Yeah. So uh, uh, especially if uh, uh, like you have uh, complex problems, and uh, that's uh, that's my personal uh, like you know uh, views. That uh, um, uh, you want to you um, the initial the initial guess will help you to uh, help us to like um, to have uh, some 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 at least some uh, well uh, to make a um, analogy is so uh, if you like learn um, learn from uh, like uh, large data so uh, the initial initial guess may help us to reduce. You know these uh, this learning process, so that's of course yeah. from the from the machine learning perspective. But still, I think um, I always believe that uh, 
uh, computer cannot replace mm -hmm. human heads. So <laughs> I, this is my belief. And um, now we still have, uh, in, in order to have some, you know, these breakthroughs, you know, we need this physical insights. Okay. Also, uh, let me understand. Yes. If, if, if we don't normalize the data in a proper way, then yes. we cannot even get the convergence. I mean, it, we have to like oh. see the data, visualize the data, how it look like. And uh, here, for instance, we remove the mean and mm -hmm. then uh, uh, also uh, uh, divide by uh, the standard deviation. Yes. Okay, so you still need the human intervention to guide. Okay, for the data because the data can be like in any form. I mean, maybe yes. some people use different uh, ways like data cleaning or somehow to remove some data or to normalize somehow. I mean, we cannot fix anything even without knowing because then maybe we we cannot train it or we cannot get convergence. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But let, let us imagine that you are a very good physicist and you also are a good computer scientist. You yeah. train very well your, uh, you know, algorithm, and then essentially your work is done. You 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 know yeah. uh, you are unemployed. No, I mean, <laughs> that's you know. Uh, okay, because when you say topological crystals, then I, I think it's a very important field of physics. Do you think that deep learning could do as well as, you know, people, you know, in terms of finding, well, the best possible, you know, uh, symmetries and so on to get large topological stop bounds, uh, edge waves in exactly the correct range of frequencies? And, I mean, if deep learning can do this, you know, we can just find a new job. So, uh, <laughs> no, 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 it's, uh, I mean, you know, perhaps uh, in the years to come, uh, we'll have a serious issue with this. Uh, okay, so apart from these philo philosophical questions, uh, do people have any more, you know, uh, questions regard re regarding the code? Because it's a unique opportunity with uh, Professor Wu and her collaborators to ask uh, questions. Or you could actually email them, I guess, yeah? yeah. Sure. Or even apply for a job, a postdoctoral position or else with Professor Wu, because you can see that uh, this group is really doing uh, cutting edge uh, research. And with that, I think that uh, I would like to thank you again, uh, Professor Wu, for this really uh, fantastic talk. I really loved uh, this uh, webinar today. And um, thank you very much, people, for attending. And uh, I look forward uh, to uh, to seeing you again uh, next Tuesday. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so yeah. much, Professor. Thank you for the great talk. Thanks. Thank you.